Secondly, I usually sit in the lounge and I whimper all through the flight. <laughs> and I, I look out the window and I turn to the guy who's sitting next to me and I'll say, this flying is really amazing. I said, the people, they look like ants down there. And he'll say, those are ants, you idiot. We haven't taken off yet, you know. <laughs> but anyway, there's a, there's a logical explanation for why I don't fly. I took a non-scheduled airline one time. I was in the army and I wanted to go to Hawaii on a three-day pass, see? I... <laughs> but I didn't have a lot of money and they were running ads at the time. Uh, and one ad read, take a chance <laughs> on the Mrs. Grace L. Ferguson airline and Storm Door Company, see? <laughs> so, they gave an address, and I went out to this address, and it was this woman's home. And she had a little counter set up in her living room, and uh, we had to go up to the John to weigh our baggage, I remember. And then we all got in her Volkswagen, and she drove us out to the airport. We got aboard this DC-1. We were out about two hours, a captain came out. He gave one of those addresses they all give. And I'll never forget it, and this is why I don't fly anymore. It came out like this. <laughs> You're the navigator, you ought to be able to figure out where the hell we are. <laughs> uh, good evening. I'd, uh, I'd like to welcome you aboard the Mrs. Grace L. Ferguson Airline and Storm Door Company. Uh, I don't know how much you know about our airlines. We've, uh, we've only been in business uh, about a week. Uh, our airline was uh, founded on the philosophy that what the American public was really looking for was a low cost overseas transportation. Uh, we have attempted to eliminate what we call in the airline business uh, frills and extras, like uh, maintenance and, uh, <laughs> and radar and a whole bunch of, uh, of, uh, of technical instruments up in the... Uh... Roy, have, have you ever had one that hangs on for about four or five days? I don't, I don't mind the headaches too much, but it's that damn double vision that just... Oh, uh, incidentally, I want to apologize for uh, your having to stand all the way. <laughs> uh, if I can give you a little tip there, every, uh, oh, half hour or so, you want to alternate your arms through those uh, straps above your head. Uh, you, f you folks flying tourists, you don't have any straps. <laughs> So uh, don't, uh, don't bother looking for them. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to have a little drill in a few moments uh, <laughs> by our, our two stewardesses, Trixie and Bubbles. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Miss Watson and Miss Savage. And uh, they'll show you how to put your life jackets on. Uh, there really isn't that much to it, but a lot of people uh, get them on backwards. And, uh, well, that way you're going to wind up with your face in the water. <laughs> uh, if we should have to ditch, you'll, you'll receive plenty of warning uh, because our co-pilot becomes hysterical. <laughs> and he'll, he'll start uh, running up and down the aisles, uh, yelling, uh, you know, we're going to crash or, or something like that. Uh, actually, he gets, he gets kind of panicky, and it, it isn't always too easy to understand him. Uh, at least it hasn't been in the past, anyway. <laughs> so, if, if you see him running up and down the aisles, uh, and you can't make out what he's saying, uh, you, might, you might slip into your life jackets to <laughs> be on the safe side. Uh, I'd like to answer some questions that you may have uh, about the airline. 
It's uh, the woman right here. Ma'am, ma if I may, I'll repeat the question so everyone uh, can hear it. it. If we should ditch, how long would the plane remain afloat? Is, is that the, was that your question, ma'am? Uh, <laughs> golly, that's, that's awful hard to say, ma'am. <laughs> uh, some of them go down like a rock. You know? <laughs> And then, I don't know, for some reason or other, others will stay up for, oh, two, three minutes. It's, uh... <laughs> Sir, if I may, I'll get your question next. I want to get the gentleman's way in the back there. <laughs> Sir, could you kind of speak up a little bit? I can't hear you over the roar of our engines. Maybe, you know, if you just... Oh, wait, they stopped now, sir. Harry, the engines went out again. <laughs> it's uh, the third button on the left, I think, here. <laughs> hold, hold it, Harry, the cabin lights are going out. Uh, th uh, try the third button on the right. That's got him, that's got him. You want, you want to try the question again, sir? <laughs> sir, I'm sorry, I still can't make out what you're saying. Oh, well, sure, all right, all right, you can try it that way, it may work. First word. <laughs> so sounds like running. <laughs> sounds like racing. Track and field. Ran. Oh, it sounds like ran. Uh, man. A lot of man. A whole bunch of... Men? Oh, men! Men is right behind you there, sir. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I took your question ahead of this gentleman's over here. Uh, I really have to get back in the cabin now. We, uh, we have it on automatic pilot, but uh, well, the damn thing keeps kicking in and out all the time, and uh, <laughs> we never really know if it's on or not. Oh, uh, one, of the, one of the reasons I came out here, I nearly forgot. Uh, have, have any of you ever, ever been to Hawaii before? This a gentleman, gentleman right here? It's, uh, it's kind of liver-shaped, isn't it, sir? <laughs> sir, as, as we're coming in, uh, would you mind very much uh, stopping by the cabin and... Kinda... <laughs> pointing it out to us, we sure appreciate it. Thank you very much. I hope you have a very pleasant trip. Thank you. Thank you.